as we're trying to incorporate a lot of our Arabic and Islamic into the general day-to-day -day use of our language and hopefully our learners' language. And when I refer to the learners, I'm talking about the young people that I have the pleasure of working alongside, as do my colleagues. Um, so to welcome from me, uh, there will be various people that will introduce themselves over the evening. Uh, when we have finished, uh, the idea is just for you to circulate and ask any particular curriculum-related questions that you might have at this stage. I've got all my heads of department, my middle leadership team at the back, so please make the most of them. Uh, it's not about looking at individual progress at this stage. It's a general overview if you're concerned about a curriculum aspect or what they'll be covering or how it will be covered, then they're the sort of questions that we're very much looking at this evening. We also are fortunate, and thank you very much to also some of the learners and the young people who've come in tonight at the back, some of our pupils. Again, if you want to speak to them, where you might get an even better idea of what they might be doing. Sorry to head to the department, I don't mean that rudely. But um, please do use them as well, because that's why we've got them here. I've always found in the schools that I work with, those young people are my best ambassadors. Uh, and so we try and utilise them as often as we can. So that is, if you like, um, the idea. I don't have to frame, I think, what and how education is viewed in the UAE. The agenda and everything now is increasingly quantifiable and increasingly more rigorous. And I think that is reflected not only here at the school, but all over Dubai, but importantly for us, it's also reflected the quality of staff that teach here. And those that have come new, I'm delighted to say, have done a fan, made a fantastic start and hopefully there's been such feedback from the established parents as I would describe you and established young people learners that we see in our classroom. But that says it all. It, it is an important vision for this nation and the investment that has to be made by us as teachers into serving your young people as we move through. There is an indication in my secondary team. They'll be coming up. Uh, and speaking, Mr. Ben Atkins will speak about curriculum. Uh, Ms. Victoria Carr is going to speak later about ECAs and TRIPS. I'll introduce the general uh, aspects uh, as, as following on from this. Uh, and Mark Hughes, it, Ms. Mark Hughes is going to be talking about Arabic and Islamic and just giving you a general overview following on from me immediately. Um, and I also believe congratulations are uh, in that as he had a birth of baby son. Only yesterday, is that right? So, many congratulations on that. Um, I also have my middle leadership team, as I said, my head of department, but equally, I also have three important people and points of contact for yourselves, alongside the form tutors, who I'm sure you'll be aware of, but there are my pastoral leads, Matthew Ashton and Rachel Price, and Tony Beadle is his best known, rather than Anthony, um, which was my music calling that when he was naughty, I'm not sure, but... Possibly, as is the way I go, but Tony will also be talking a little bit about the sixth form work experience. And Rachel, unfortunately, is not been well, so Matthew is very kindly stepped into the breach and will talk to you about the house system uh, tonight uh, on his own, so he's going solo. But um, that's the idea of where we want to go with the rest of it. The other people you might see around the school are these key people. You'll probably want people there on the reception desk. Or you might even speak to Lynn on the phone, arranging an appointment to see me or one of my staff. Um, they are important points of contact, and hopefully most of you are probably fairly familiar with these uh, people in helping guide and dictate our diaries, but equally help you out on any concerns that you might have and direct you in the right areas. I wanted to start off tonight, as I have done throughout all the schools where I have been head, uh, with a success story and that is no doubt the case here. I'm delighted to have come into a position where we see an increasing upward flight path of GCSE grades, our A-levels have an up and down approach but that, you've got, that's dictated partly by numbers and the numbers that stay on to year 13 and equally the numbers that then also leave us at year 12. But we're delighted to be growing our sixth form, that's the idea not only from a subject perspective but also an individual perspective and they are key cornerstones as we move forward and look forward to a year's time, and as I say, in, in the moments ahead, over the next month and a half, you'll learn more about Sunmark and the move across there as well. But it's, I'm delighted to come here, you can just see the upper flight path that we're on, 
The most important thing for me is to maintain this momentum. It's really crucial that we get there. The schools I've taught in, I'm used to seeing 80, 80 plus. They are our aims to maintain and sustain where we have got to. And the great job that Ben and Mark have done in leading the school to where they are now. And I think those statistics this year speak for themselves and check very loudly about where we are now. Human values is a fundamental part of the school. It underpins, it's the root, it's the foundation of everything that we do here. It threads through all our lessons. We have a two weekly theme that's posted and you'll see that if you come in and look at our screens where there'll be a quote which the pupils will look at um, and, and evaluate and analyze over the week as well as doing mindfulness, uh, looking at journals, trying to be reflective, looking at their strengths, looking at their weaknesses. But these for me are crucial to the development of every young person. We look at a holistic development here, either the whole person and not just part of the person. The academic underpinning that we give them is built upon these values. And you can subdivide those values into so many areas, but they are fundamental to how we want to progress. And as I've read somewhere, and I'm not going to take um, claim for this quote, but it's about education for the heart and education of the heart. And if we can get that right, then we're going to go a very long way in making sure academic achievement and academia is also a high standard. But this is the growth, and that's why it's uh, advocated by a tree, the growth and development of every young learner that we have here. And it's an important aspect of what we do. Our school day has changed slightly this year. It looks as though we've got 29 periods there. Um, they are 15 minute slots, it's just the way it's worked out in the timetable. Lessons are now 45 minutes, with the prerequisite breaks and snack breaks at the end. We're right at the end with two breaks, one of them is in here, and then the lunchtime break is now a 45 minute break. Um, and they do that in MPH1 and then go on to the AstroTurf just outside as you come through the front gates. But it gives you an understanding of where we are. We also will encourage people to do ECAs as uh, they, they come online. Uh, and begin in the weeks ahead. So hopefully we will see everyone not only looking in the classroom, but equally outside of it as well. These three things really underpin where I stand at this present time and where I have stood in all my leadership roles. Appearance seems a strange one, a strange one to have on there, but I believe tidy person, tidy mind. It's just quite a simple analogy. And I'm sure that you've had some feedback about the little bits that I want to see from standing up in the classroom and showing common courtesy to adults to looking presentable. Our learners are the face of the school. I want that face of the school to be one that we all love, we all respect, and I want them to respect that as well. And that is the ideal behind what I feel is really important. I don't want to be put in the position over the next few weeks where because they haven't got the right uniform, we have to take further action. I don't want that. I want them to be there. I want everyone to follow the uniform policy as it's been put out for the last two years. It's on the VLE if you, if you haven't seen it, but please, it's a really important aspect in if you like, the manner and the start of a school day and starting it in the correct way. The second one, aspiration. I want everyone here to be aspirational. I'd like you to be aspirational as I'm sure you are for, for your children. Uh, we equally are so for the learners. There's um, something, my, I'm a, I was a governor in the UK, and my chair of government said this to his school. He said, let the children have their head in the clouds and their feet on the floor. And if we can go somewhere to achieve that by getting smart targets, something that's specific, they're measurable, they're realistic, then I think we'll go a long way to achieving those aspirations for those young people. And I've already touched on this with regards to involvement, whether that's through ECAs, whether that's through very kindly helping out with uh, something like this, or going down a charitable route. Whatever happens, please be involved. I was only the other day, it was delightful to see Freeze, which is our friends of Regents, uh, come and host a morning. Um, it was lovely to see some of the secondary parents there. We want more to be involved, please. It would be really helpful to get that uh, initiative moving. There's lots of primary parents, there's a few secondary, or we'd love to see that grow over the next few years, next few months especially. 
So if you are interested, please do uh, ask any of the quiz members that are here tonight. And thank you for coming, those that are here. There's a table up there, so if there's any interest in being involved. And there's some fantastic projects to raise money for charitable objectives, but equally also for, for our learning environment as well. So please, I would do. I would only recommend that everyone tries at some point to just take part, maybe in one event, two events, whatever you feel you can give your time. But I do appreciate we are very busy people as well. But involvement for the young people is an important part of this holistic development through the ECAs in and out of the classroom. I'm not going to read that slide, but I'm just going to tell you quite simply, this is really how we're going to aim to carry on this achievement. To sustain where we are, to develop where we are. It is done through careful tracking of progress, careful nurturing of individual talents, careful nurturing of your son or daughter. And if we can get that right, and they are happy and contented school, they will learn much, much more effectively. And I think it's really important that we stress, they are our aims, but they're not our sole aims. There are many more that go alongside that to make sure that every young person that comes through our doors gets the best value from the academic environment, but equally outside the environment. As I started really, the expectations now at a national level with the national agenda and the UAE inspection framework as it is now, are very high. We are looking now at 50% or above achieving minimal levels of grade B, or as it will become, and this will be explained in the curriculum aspect, grade 6. And at A level, the expectation is that over 50%, just for good, will be A level. I certainly don't want to aim for good. I want to move us to outstanding, and that's going to take a lot of hard work. It's not going to happen overnight, but as you've already seen with the results and the pathways that we've been on, we're already a long way down that road. We now have to go that next stage. And I hope with the staff that I have here and the senior staff that have got the experience of the school, but equally the fresh and new innovative ideas, if I can use that word, will come through to see us move towards outstanding in the next two to three years. But it is a tough ask, as you can see from there. But it is not without our capabilities. It is certainly not without our capabilities and certainly something we're striving strongly for to achieve. I talked about innovation. It is now a key thread in what the UAE expects and the agenda, the national agenda that is out there. I think I have, in the lessons that I've observed thus far this term, an innovative staff, a staff that are not afraid to take risks, but evaluate what's good and take out what isn't as good. And that, to me, will see a successful learning environment develop. You walk around the school, I think it's a fantastic learning environment, not just in the classroom, but outside of it as well, with interesting and colourful, bright displays. Not just in primary, but if you go into the secondary, equally so as well. And that is important. Our current system for tracking progress and making sure that we achieve those grade B's and above is there. We have ongoing regular assessment, that might be what we call formative, which is the here and now, or summative, the one that looks back at seeing how much and what you've learned over a period of time. There's attainment through the external tests, international tests, and CATS tests, which give us the baseline from which we can work from. And then the progress over different starting points it involves teacher assessment to triangulate all that inf all that wealth of information that we have. And from that, it's not only about the teachers setting those targets, but equally about those young people <coughs> setting their targets that are aspirational, that are challenging, that are not just going to be, well, I can sit back and relax. It will stretch and push everyone. And we look, have to look, as the National Agenda dictates, at different groups, different talented, IND, Emirati students, we have to have those in mind. And especially the boy-girl gap, which is something that's really quite, still quite talked about in England at this stage. 
So when do you get information? You're going to get a lot of information, I know, in a moment from, first of all, Mr. Hughes, who's going to talk about Arabic and Islamic, uh, and then Mr. Atkins, who's going to talk about the curriculum. But you will get specific written information at the end of each term. This term you'll have uh, a written report at the end of it. We also have a formal parents' evening where you can speak about the progress of your son or daughter on, on the 27th of October to all the staff. And there are other dates that will be and are shared on the calendar. I don't want to throw loads of dates at you because I'm sure something like myself, I'll go away thinking which date was that, etc. But the 27th of October is the next really key date if you want to find out about the progress and tone of your son or daughter. There's a written report set in the term, there's another parent teacher review date at the beginning of the January term and the April term, and all those dates will be released uh, and given to you in hopefully a stepped fashion. Uh, and they're normally on the first day of term when we return and we collapse school to be able to um, accommodate the numbers that we have. You can see from there, we try to keep you informed. If you want information along the way, please don't hesitate to get hold of any of the team in here. And that's normally done through their form teacher, through the homework diaries, through the VLE, through my, my EA, or through the pastoral leaders who will talk to you later. We work on an open door policy. We are here to make sure that your son and daughter gets the very best. And we want to work with you, and that's the only way we will achieve that. We, will, we need to work with you to, to get that. So you'd be delighted to hear that's it from me, as it were. I'm now going to hand over to Mark, Mr. Hughes, who's our head of standards, uh, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about Arabic and Islamic. <laughs> Mahabha and welcome. Um, first of all, I'm just going to apologise. I'm slightly tired. Um, it was a bit of a late night. Um, but I am going to try to sum up um, what we're doing here in region this year with regard to Arabic and Islamic studies. As Harvey briefly mentioned earlier on, there is a new UAE national agenda, um, very much aligned with Dubai winning the Expo in 2020, and they're obviously trying to push standards in many different fields. Um, that has had a huge impact on how we deal with Arabic and Islamic studies here at region. Obviously, we've got the curriculum areas, you know, Arabic A and B, Islamic A and B, so on and so forth, of which all students, all Muslim students, will do Islamic studies. Those who don't go into the human values lessons at that time. But rather than talk about the curriculum, I want to talk about what we are doing on top of the curriculum to try to really promote it. For those of you who aren't aware, obviously Arabic is mandatory in this country. Okay, We are living in an Arabic country. We have to make sure that we're trying to impart the language and get students up to a certain level. As part of the new national agenda, what they have said now is that students have got to reach a certain level in Arabic by the end of year 10. That's going to be assessed through what is known as a NAP test, the National Assessment Programme, and basically they're trying to get as much language proficiency as possible. Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, you go to the malls and everyone's speaking English. They're really trying to promote that Arabic language. So what we've done is we've brought together a group of students, a student voice as such for Arabic. They are meeting on a weekly basis. And for those of you who haven't seen or don't log on to the VLE, you will see, for example, last week we did record them doing some Arabic phrases. We are really trying to push the students in leading this program. Now, where this came from, once we went through the national agenda and started looking at what they were saying and what they wanted us to achieve, we scoured the world and looked at different programs whereby they're really trying to bring in language proficiency. And we kept coming back to Wales. Those of you who don't know Wales, Wales is a small country in the United Kingdom. They have their own language of the English, obviously Welsh, and they had a Welsh incidental language program. Now, fundamentally, what it is, is it's trying to immerse students on a daily basis in the language. So we just stole what they'd done there, thought it, they'd had some really good results. We decided we were going to try in Arabic. So I don't know if you realize, but in a morning, many of the senior leaders on the gate will be greeting in Arabic. So you will hear us about care, okay? Good morning in Arabic, or you will hear Mahab. And we're really trying to push that through the school as much as possible. 
Initially, our department chose the phrases. It's now that student voice that I was speaking about earlier, and they're really going to be leading on the phrases. The teachers all around the room are absolutely delighted that we're asking them to speak Arabic. You'll hear some weird and wonderful accents, mine being one of the worst, I'm sure. Uh, but we are looking to really try to get them using it in the day-to-day -day life of the school. So what's that going to mean? What does that look like in lessons? Fundamentally, your child isn't going to get taught maths in Arabic or get it in humanities lessons. But we want to get those basic greetings, the basic pleasantries, and all those phrases that we can do done through Arabic as opposed to English. The reception staff are absolutely delighted that we're going to start telling them to answer the phone in Arabic as well. Okay, because we want it to become a normal part of the day-to-day -day life of the school. We are looking at, through the phrase of the week, we are looking at, at you as parents to support them. Okay, if they see every morning you coming in or you dropping a child off and us greeting in Arabic and you replying in English, okay, they just going to do it in English as well. So last week through the VLE we have published a phrase, Arabic phrases or an Arabic guide for parents. In there there's hundreds of phrases okay, that have been published to you as parents and what I would ask you to do is to sit down with your child at home and actually learn the language alongside them. Alongside them. I know that's very primary okay, but I don't know what you all feel like. I've lived in this country for over seven years now and I know so little Arabic and I'm sure many of you are the same if you're already not an Arabic language speaker. So I would ask that you do engage with those phrases on a weekly basis and make sure that you are trying to support your child in learning them. Because actually, what's been quite interesting for me since I started doing it is the students are more than eager to join in and to actually help me as I'm going. Because I guarantee you now, your child is probably better at Arabic than, than any of you lot, if I can say, unless you are Arabic speaking. So really do engage with that process. Um, last year, when we were doing our requisitions for this academic year, we bought Arabic library books. So we're going to start trying to push them in the library to get those Arabic library books out. And actually, there's English books which mirror it as well. And that works particularly well for Key Stage 3. We are looking to see how we can increase what we have got for Key Stage 4 and older and look and see if we can order it and get the bilingual copies or get the Arabic translated copies. Um, ECAs, we've done a lot of work in and around ECAs in the past, for those of you who've been here quite a while, you would have seen on the ECA list Arabic language for year 7, Arabic language for year 9, Arabic language for 10 and 11, okay? It really wasn't that exciting. So now this year we're looking at an Arabic quiet, for example, so when you see the singing, that is more like a fire or a band or, you know, something a little bit more modern and we're really trying to promote that. We're going to be looking at trying to promote technology. As part of our orders for this year, we've, we've ordered some tablets and we really want to start trying to use those in the Arabic and Islamic studies lessons for that matter to try to make sure that we are capturing what the students are doing and using that to engage them, excite them a lot more and get them really involved with their own learning. You know, in this day and age, I'm sure there's not many people in around this room who doesn't own either a smartphone, a tablet, or some electronic device which can be used to support. One thing which I was saying to primary parents last week at their curriculum meeting was, I think, a really good way to sort of measure, one, how the pronunciation is going, but two, to measure that progress, is by actually recording themselves and videoing themselves back. When I did it at the student voice meeting last week, they were amazed at you know, how it sounded and how it came across and didn't realise how it was actually coming over. So one thing I have strongly recommended is at home, recording themselves and recording themselves at various points over time to see how they're progressing through learning more words. You know, we are trying to look at different ways or more exciting ways to engage learners in Arabic and Islamic students. I don't think it's a big secret around here that it's not necessarily been as good as what the teaching and learning has been like, like in other subject areas. So that is something that we are really trying to push and promote as much as possible. I've been meeting with the department on more or less a daily basis, as I know many of the members of SLT have been as well. And we are really trying to look to push them forward and move them forward. 
they are going to have a lot more support, not only just from me and my new remit, but they are going to have a lot more support from all of the other senior leaders in the school so that we can really try to advance them and get them up to the level that all other departments are. One good thing this year, um, as I'm sure that Ben's going to speak about in a little while with regards to curriculum, um, is we've looked at themes and looking at more thematic curriculum, which really permeates throughout all areas. And the Arabic as Arabic students department are going to engage with that and make sure that those themes are running through what they're delivering as well. In the past, they were very standalone. So we are trying to integrate them as much as possible. Okay? I'm not going to talk for any longer because I only wanted to introduce that incidental program so that parents were aware and they actually understood what we were trying to do. You know, we've got a student voice. If your child would like to be involved in it, tell them to come and speak to me. Because the more students we have engaged in with that, the better. But I beg you all for this to work. We need you as parents doing the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. He's not Scott and Mrs. New Sun, so that's why he's, you wonder why he's run out. That's why. I'm going to hand you now over to Ben, who is my deputy and, and looks after the curriculum matters, which I'm sure many of you are, are familiar with anyway. Good evening. We're going to run through the different key stages and go through just a brief overview of what each key stage is about and what the students learn. There are three key stages within the secondary school, three, four, and five. And key stage five is most commonly referred to as our sixth form. In year seven this year, and developing into year eight next year, we are adopting a thematic approach to our curriculum in terms of we're taking the English text, which the students are reading, and we're filtering that through all of the other subject areas and relating the novel or, or the, the text that the students are, are working through in their English lessons and applying it in different ways to the other subjects. So we started off this year with year seven, and they've started on the demon headmaster. So you can see there are different topic areas where we're looking at different things. For example, um, it could be a history, and they're looking at a uh, change of rulers and conquest, like the demon headmaster has the power in changes and like that. Or it could be uh, ICT, where we're looking at the school map, provided danger, and looking at the school that maybe the demon headmaster sets from. This will develop for year seven and eight, and it will be a thematic approach, and it will work through each of the half, each, about ten week blocks, so four, four blocks throughout each of the years, the two years, and the novels which you use. From that way, that the students will engage more with the text, they'll have a better understanding, and they'll be exposed to it in, in many curriculum areas. And the theme throughout all the curriculum areas will pull the novel together and link all of their learning. So here's another example now. Uh, when students come to see them like that. Year 9 is used as a transition year um, where we start to move away from the themed approach and we start to build in the skills which we require for GCSE. So we start to look at more of the content and the exam style best and look at where that's going to lead to for years 10 and 11. The GCSEs um, are the qualifications which the UK use, which England uses, sorry. Uh, and last year they said that the IGCSEs weren't going to have as much importance in terms of the league tables in the UK. So what we've done here, as we're applying this year to the classes of British school overseas, is our IGCSEs, which are not regulated by um, the government, they're just independent by the exam boards, we're moving away from those and going with the regulated exams which fall in line with all the other students in England. The, the, the gold standard of qualification is that a 16 year old can attend. The current year sevens are the first year group where the headline of how many GCSEs, they get five GCSEs, including English and Maths, which has been used for many years now, will start to go away. And instead, they're going to look at attainment aid and progress aid, where the students will have to have studied something called the English Baccalaureate. That's a range of subjects, including Maths, English, Science, Humanities, and Languages where the students have to pass all of those um, subjects to be classed as achieving the English Baccalaureate or the EBAN. This year will also be the first year that we report how well students do across eight GCSEs in a term of eight, uh, rather than just five GCSEs, including English and Maths. So if your child in year nine, we start to then look at the options choice at the end of year nine for the GCSE subjects. And we've made sure that our option blocks here both cover the EBAC, but also building pathways um, going forward beyond GCSE. 
Students typically, typically study 10 GCSEs during years 10 and 11. It's a two year course, so we don't change subjects again as we start year 11. We follow them through for the whole two years. Students who uh, may require extra help or are struggling with so many GCSEs, there is scope where we can reduce certain ones. So for example, we can look at in the maths block, rather than doing maths and statistics, we just do the maths GCSE. So there is a way where we can make sure that our students who are struggling um, are catered for as well. In addition to a modern foreign language that we teach in school, there's also the option, um, as we have some students who maybe like Russian speakers, for example, we can pick up home language GCSEs in addition to what's taught in school as well. Next year will be the first year where the GCSEs in maths and English break away from what we are aware of A star to C, or A star to C, all the way down to G and U. They're going to introduce now a numbered system. So one is the equivalent of a grade G, and it goes all the way up to a nine, which is an A star. And one of the reasons there, we think, is if they want to make it even harder, they can put a ten on the end of it and say it back to the top. So, for example, a grade C, which will be this year's year 11 group, is the, going to be the equivalent next year as a grade 4. And that is an old picture because actually it changed. And whereas C as a 4 was what the minimum was in the UK, they've now said that a 5 is going to be the minimum expectations. So A star to C is basically going to be a 9 to 5. As an international school, as Harvey was talking about, being good, very good or outstanding, we need to be above those critical expectations. And for us to be classed as good as an international school, fives aren't good enough for us, we need students to be getting a six or above. So you can see on the table, getting a six is like being in the top third of a grade B. So not just getting a C or even just a B, we're now looking at students being in the top third of a grade B. At GCSE and at A level, we do exams by three exam boards at this school at the moment, XA and Excel in Cambridge. All exam boards, there is no dif uh, difference between them in terms of their academic rigour, or one is harder than the other, or one is easier than the other. The only difference is that Cambridge is IGCSEs and it isn't regulated by the UK, but AQA and Excel both are. We still use Cambridge for some awards, uh, like at A level, where they don't exist in terms of in England. Some of those are language, language A level, various levels, um, whereas there would be a huge demand of actually regulating England. But it doesn't matter which exam board we use, the qualification is the same. As we take our subjects at year 10, students can choose at the moment, that's the present list of subjects that they choose from, and they're studied over the two years. And we start to think where well, this is leading to after GCSEs. Here at this school, we offer A levels as we carry on the English model of education, and then students are able to choose three A levels from, from that list there that we're current offering. At AS level in year 12 and A level in year 13, students again choose subjects and see them for a further two years. They don't change subjects halfway through. And what we've done is, although we're an A level school, we are aware that some students, because of the international context, may stay in Dubai or they may move on to another country, or even if they do stay here, they want a different curriculum. We make sure that our options cater for A levels of the International Baccalaureate. When we do A levels at Region, we award students something called the AQA Baccalaureate. It's three A levels, which is the depth of study. They take three of their subject areas and study them in depth over the two years. We do a broader study, which it looks at um, general studies, which takes into account a different nature um, of language and science and maths. Um, across a range of subjects. Students do something called the Extended Project, or the Extended Project Qualification, EQQ, and that is a mini university style um, either dissertation or presentation or research about an artifact, and that shows um, universities the students' ability to uh, explore a subject area in greater detail. The final part of the baccalaureate that we offer, which goes with our A levels, is the enrichment program. Mr. Beadle will talk about the work experience, which makes up part of that. But we also expect students to be involved in voluntary work, charity work, community service, and all the other elements that make our children the, the well rounded individual that we want to send off after they leave us. 
Arabic and Islamic is still compulsory in year 12 as per KHDA. However, coming in in the UK next year is the compulsory study of maths up to grade 12, year 12, um, which we implemented this year, um, which shows that students, whatever their ability in maths at 16, can still take maths further for that additional year, bringing us in line with most countries around the world. We go back to our year 9 options form, and we call the different categories A to G. When your child comes to choose their options at the end of year nine for the GCSE program, if IB isn't sorry, if IB is the route that you want to do, or you believe it was after year eleven and you go down that pathway, then the IB program, which is very similar to what we offer, um, is catered for through our optional structure as well. So we're not we're not taking anybody out of the equation and closing their doors too early. So for example, the IB still offers theory of knowledge and the extended essay. That's the broader study and the similar to the EPQ. We still expect students to do action service, which is the enrichment part of things and doing the volunteering. However, the difference between A levels and IB is that they have to study a subject from each of those categories there. So they have to take um, a language, um, whether it be a brand new language or one that they've already learned. They have to study literature, either in their home language or English. Again, they have to choose maths and they have to study that. Actually, from the art, from the science, um, and for one from um, the societies and individuals. So, the IB is a different pathway. It's one that at present we don't offer a region. We, we have the A level route, but it means that your child, as they come through the school with us, it still is an opportunity. So, we, we don't need to leave and go and join the NYP program. After GCSEs, that option is still available. Now, after year 11, once you've done your GCSEs, uh, entry into year 12 is not automatic. It's not an automatic promotion through the school into the sixth form. The sixth form is a standalone two years which looks at A levels and is dependent upon the GCSE results. Approximately, we say GCSEs. It could be five if you're all A's and A stars, it could be ten if there's a mixture of B's and a lot of C's. But each subject has got its own entry requirement and we look at all the exams taken to see the overall ability of the child. So for example, to study maths beyond the age of 16, as in A-level maths, you need to have attained a grade A at GCSE. The physics is a grade B, and the GCSE physics, which is just a GCSE physics on its own, but what we do at Region is we do an exam at the end of year 10, core science, and one at the end of year 11, additional science, and the, and the students will have to get an A in both of those GCSEs. So, in year 10, um, the exam that they do for science is just as important as it is in year 11. Homework. Homework is, um, is set uh, each week with a guidance of the number of minutes and the number of subjects per night that they should be achieving homework in. Uh, so this is used to help students to balance the workload and make sure that they're not overwhelmed and everything's given out one night and during the next day. Thank you, Ben. So I'm going to ask um, Mr. Ashton now to come and speak a little bit about the high system. Um, <laughs> and, and just give you a little bit of uh, understanding about the, the key ports of call for you as parents if you've got any concerns. Okay, I have, uh, I have a speed round. Um, I don't have uh, too long, but uh, I will give you a little bit background about the pastoral system. Um, as educators, uh, we have a moral responsibility, I guess you could say, to prepare your, uh, your young children or young adults for future life when they go beyond school. So it's not before we do the classroom, it's what we do everything around that. And also we take care um, to make sure that they're in the wider society, they represent school um, with the characteristics and personalities that we wish for. Um, so we have a house system, so whereby every student that joins the school here in region will be given and entered into a house. Uh, there are four in total. We have uh, red falcons and yellow hawks, which are uh, pastoral leaves that is used quite a bit. Um, and then we have green eagles and blue kestrels, which are the pastoral leaves for on that side. Intertwined within that, we have our sixth form this year, and that's Mr. Beaver, who is head of sixth form there. So that forms part of our pastoral team. However, the wider team is our te the teaching staff as well, and they are the foot soldiers that really put in place everything that we. Um, we look to try and implement, and they're going to really push that through for us. Um, and this year, we're lucky enough to have uh, a number of 
uh, new members of staff, a uh, range of experiences, and um, all very, very keen to, to be heavily involved, um, all competitive himself, just like children. So uh, we really want to promote this uh, identity, and that identity within the house system, so that as you move through to school life, you feel like you're a part of something. So yes, you are working to achieve the best grades you can, but you also know that you have other students around you to help you um, in whatever it is, activity, whether that be a competition, whether it be a sports event, whether it be a musical performance, um, a drama performance we had last year, even though we, um, we don't have a drama department on the subject, but lots of different opportunities for them to excel. And um, that's something we try to promote. And we're lucky that we have a number of students that excel at a huge range of activities, all three of those I've just mentioned. Um, we, I, I still remember, for example, when I was at school, uh, I was at Oak House when I was at school. I still remember the people that were in my house. Um, I was extremely competitive, as I still am now, so from time to time, me and Mrs. Price do get a little bit excited about who's going to win the next competition. Um, so we try to involve ourselves as we do the tutors to make sure the kids really buy into that club. And that's how it was growing. Uh, last year, we really made some huge inroads in, in the house system, and we felt that, uh, the pupils really bought into that. And um, one of those, the main aspects of that, I found, is the virtual tutor system, uh, whereby we have kids or uh, pupils ranging from year 7 and 1 grade to year 13. Last year, the sixth one were a separate entity, um, however, they did implement a mentoring scheme. This year, they are in the, at the house in the morning, so tutor time will be with the tutor, and there will be a range of students ranging from 19 to 22 in the tutor group, and all from year 7 to 13. The idea behind that is that we have full integration. And actually, our older students, our sixth formers, are very, very good at acting as role models for their own And that's something we really want to promote. And that's that whole identity. And they can learn from observing how they take on the challenges that they face. But also, they can help hopefully teach them um, new, new things for them to learn along the way. And they can be almost that, that shoulder to cry sometimes when the tutor might not necessarily be around, or they might not want to approach the tutor. So that's something that was a real big focus last year. Um, and during inspection time, something that was mentioned as a key strength of us. Something again which we try to promote within the shoot. Um, we have numerous competitions for them throughout the year, uh, whether that be house competitions from art, for example, is going to be our first one after the new holidays, um, sports day that's usually in around January, February time, um, and a host of different opportunities for us to do that as well. Then we try to promote, um, as Mr. Hughes said earlier, on the Arabic uh, Islamic side as well, we're trying to promote that through. Um, you know, through the students, who mainly are Arabic speaking children, obviously, uh, to help kind of coerce and help uh, the other individuals to bring on that, that basic language into the class. It's something we want to do in the Again, I, I thoroughly enjoy the pastoral system, uh, and I'm thrilled that we have a number of new members to start with to push this idea through. Um, uh, but what's crucial for us, and it's been mentioned by two, two previous um, speakers so far, um, it's crucial that there is a connection between yourselves and us. That's vital. Um, without your input and information about how your child might be feeling outside of school that we might miss during the day. Okay? Vice versa, we might see things at school that might not necessarily be reflected at home. So it's crucial that, that we have some kind of point of contact, and the first point of contact should be the tutor. Please, if you're ever in doubt or have any questions, please don't hesitate to call, write a note in the diary, email if they do have an email address, and if they don't get back to you immediately on part of the call, they should get back to you soon. And then, if you need to talk to myself, Mr. Price, or even Mr. Beaver, anyone else, you can arrange that as well. Doors are always open, as Mr. Trump said earlier. So, no question is a silly question, so we tell our people all the time, so please don't hesitate to ask if there's anything we can do. But that, that touching base, certainly the diaries to begin with, signing those diaries, checking that we're using those in the right way, um, is something that we really want to monitor this year. Um, obviously, the, the things are on the BNE PTC also, but that diary is crucial for the content. Um, and then, if you need to contact in any other way, don't hesitate. Okay, but lots of opportunities for the children this year, and hopefully we can really build on what we did last year, which was some really successful ideas. And um, look forward to actually pushing that through the rest of our team uh, together. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to careers and support, and Peter will take us through that and the sixth form. Good evening, my father. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm head of sixth form and exams, but I also do careers as well. And I really wanted to run very quickly about the career service that we try to offer students to make sure they actually get the best advice for their careers, career choices, and the pathways that they're intending to, intending to actually take. One thing I would say is that we can't all be doctors, so we have to try and find the right pathway according to what the children 
sort of the The attempt to start off with um, the Morris good test that we're promoting for students to actually take. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We've got CV writing, work experience that's held at the end of the second term. Um, where they can get a diary of each day, they have to be, um, evaluate what they're doing, um, have to get reports from employers, and then they have a post um, work experience interview with me. And then um, they can actually do their work either at home or in the, UA, um, in the UAE. So they have some time where they can actually work on, on stuff there. In year 11, um, we have individual careers tests again, um, the Canada kind of Morrison test. Um, not a repeat of the one, but an advanced one. Follow up interviews, they also go to careers fairs and visits as well. And there's an introduction to the university pathway um, that might be taken, whether it be the UK, US, or UAE, or Australia. We'll try and give them as much information as we can about it. Year 12, again, university affairs um, from the British Council and university affairs from the school, like the one we had last week, which was quite successful. Um, and then also helping them through UCAS applications or awareness of the SATs um, or ACTs for US applications. Um, or looking at Canadian, Australian, uh, or local universities. Um, again, they also do a work experience for year 12, which is held at the end of this term, and that'll be part of their enrichment activity for the, um, for the baccalaureate. Um, and again, it can be done here in the UAE, or it can be done in your home country, because it's the last week of this term. They're encouraged to do their, their work experience. Throughout this sort of the, the process, we're trying to get them to actually um, have as much knowledge as possible about making the right choices for it. Um, so that when they actually start to apply for the universities at the, um, the first term of year 13, they can have enough knowledge to know about the location of the universities, what extracurricular um, activities they can actually bring to the table as part of their, um, their application. An understanding about the finance that's going to be involved, especially if they're looking at UK um, universities and the costs there, and alternatives such as applying to European universities, which might represent a considerable saving of costs to you, the parents. Um, also would help with uh, personal statements uh, and also the difference between applying to a US um, university where the personal statement is a very different kettle of fish to um, a UK personal statement. Um, in year 13, um, we also have a look at then setting up which five universities they finally want to apply for, um, the deadlines they have to meet for it, um, and then when they actually make their, f their firm choice and their insurance choices, um, at the beginning of May. And I would really advise if you are applying for U US or UK universities that you make sure you stick to those deadlines because we did have somebody last year who handed in all their, their choices in December and it's way too early off their own back and really got to wait until May because then you can actually make the right choices after mid-year exams. For it. Okay. Also, we look at alternative partnerships and where they might be able to gain some experience in working uh, like a year out in industry. Um, which my daughter Dominic is doing working for Bentley Merchants and Crew. The Morrisby test that I mentioned earlier is really a, a careers psychometric test that we're trying to push. Um, it's an online um, test. It pushes um, or tests children's um, ability to cope um, in, in a test situation, looking at their verbal and their non verbal skills. It profiles them to then be able to then suggest various career pathways for them. So it's an exterior. Um, uh, advice sent for it. It looks at their employment opportunities, where they might be um, working, um, what fields they might be working in, what their strengths and weaknesses might be, and what suggestion for A-levels they might um, be thinking about. Because you may, as parents, think that they're very good and they should be able to um, train to be a doctor, but that may not be what the child is actually able to actually achieve. And we have to look at both areas there. Yeah. Um, and where they fit in the world of work. The thick lines, for example, on this child, shows that's where his strengths lie, and that's where we should be um, honing his career pathway. It's not an exact science, but it's pretty damn good for it. Um, and then we have suggestions of various career paths that they might be thinking about, and then we can steer their advice accordingly for it. Okay. And also where they might um, find extra information about it as well. So that all, all comes as part of the Morrisby test. And I would strongly advise, if you have children in year 10, that you do sign up for them to do the Morrisby test because it's a very, very valuable um, tool. Um, to help you as parents and then make the right decisions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll finish off with <laughs> we'll finish off with uh, Ms. Carl. Uh, Ms. Carl will talk about ECAs and the trips. When we finish, as I say, the heads of department in the back, so please do go and make use of them. There will be other parents coming in who will mingle in and talk to the heads of department as well. We're going to be repeating this for new parents 
anticipating different sorts of questions maybe at the end. So there will be other parents coming in in due course, but please make the most of the heads of the department uh, prior to the, the next seminar. Thank you. We might as well be the, the quickest part of the this presentation, I shouldn't keep you much longer. Uh, basically, um, students have had the opportunity recently to sign up for the ECAs, these are the extracurricular activities on the VLE. Uh, the ECAs will be due to begin on Sunday, the 27th of September. Uh, we have ECAs on a Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with additional sporting uh, clubs and squads running throughout the whole week as well. Uh, just to mention a few, we've got a lot more clubs in, on offer this year. Some lots of new ones as well with uh, Dissection Club, for example, uh, Uptown Club Club, which sounds very exciting, and Women Club. Uh, that's, so that's everything on a Sunday. On a Monday, we've got lots of new club stuff as well. Um, Enterprise Club, uh, we've got a netball club starting for secondary. Uh, Flying Yoga Club, which I believe is um, being positioned in different yoga positions and with partners. Is that right, Miss? Um, and our very popular Glee Club as well. And Tuesday, we've got a Street Dance Club, which I think uh, was one of the first clubs to get maximum numbers straight away. Um, Languages Club and a Debating Club, which is a new one. Okay? So there's loads on offer for your students to get involved with. If you want any more information, please see the VLA. In addition to that, we are really pushing the overseas trips um, this year. I know in the past we've maybe offered one overseas trip every year, and students have felt that they would like a better variety of trips. Um, we started advertising the trips for the summer holidays. Um, students could go for their favourite trips over the holidays. From that, we have um, on offer a variety of different trips. At the moment, uh, we have exceeded the deadline to get the deposit in, but they have extended that to the Sunday after Eid, as I know some parents might have not been able to get the deposit in earlier. Some of the trips that we have, um, one of them is a residential trip. This is mainly for year sevens, but we are going to open it to year eights, depending on numbers. This is a, a local trip in Mathalcana for two nights and they get to camp and do loads of fun activities out in the desert. Uh, we've also got the New York Business and Economics trip. This was a trip that went ahead this year, very popular. Uh, a German science trip, a Japan trip. This is proving to be the most popular overseas trip at the moment. We are looking at, I know it's a March date, but this falls into the blossom season. So we are looking to possibly change the date into the May time to hopefully make it cheaper for parents as well and so the students can get more out of that trip. Um, Orlando for science. Paris and Barcelona with languages. Um, this is a, a skiing trip to Italy. And this Trans World Soccer trip to London. Tanzania Community Service where the students actually plan the entire trip themselves. There we go. Any more information you can see on the VLE. Also, this PowerPoint will be available on the Facebook website. As I said, there's a huge amount of information. Hopefully, many of the questions you might have had 